What's up guys, this is Austin with Hot Rod Heaven and I want to introduce you to Kendall Collins, the man, the myth, the legend, also known as my dad. And we are just going to talk to him about his ride here. So uh, what, do you, what do you got going on here, dad? It's a 1974 Maverick. Nice. What prompted you to build this car here? My dad, your granddad, brought home a 1971 Grabber when I was 14 and I fell in love with the car. And so I always wanted one finally got one obviously the car didn't look like this when you got it like can you talk about the condition how it was when you first got the car actually got it in north georgia um it had been sitting in storage for like 26 years completely all original wouldn't roll wouldn't run got it for a decent price yeah i remember it, we, we had to literally push it on the trailer remember we actually pulled it with yeah. the truck onto the trailer it's crazy <laughs> it's so crazy the especially you see up, it now so yeah, it's crazy to see where it's come from when me and you yeah. and our cousins. And exactly. How long from that time when you got it there to now, how long did that build take you, you think? It took me five years to finish it originally. Completely. Yeah. Now, I did some other transformations in the last couple of years, but the original transformation, when I actually finished the car, you know, we had the photo shoot for the magazine. It was five years. Yeah, that's, that's a couple crazy. years. I didn't mess with it though, so yeah. I was getting burnt out on it. Mm -hmm. I actually considered selling it several times. Luckily, yeah. it didn't sell. Yeah, and now we're here. <laughs> Perfect. All right, well, let's go ahead and check uh, check under the motor. I'm I'm sure you guys are gonna be super excited about this. All right, guys. So here's the engine. Dad, what do what do we got going on? Well, this is a Gen One Coyote. The block's been sleeved. It's got a Boss Zero Two crank. It's got Wiseco boost line rods, manly pistons. I mean, it's got hand ported heads by, done by me and Shay Floyd. I did some work to the intake, I ported it. It's got custom comp cams and uh, good valve springs, uh, the typical oil uh, billet oil pump gears and crank sprocket. The motor was actually built by uh, Travis at Collins Performance cool. in Griffin, Georgia. We gotta give him a shout out. Travis did an awesome job on the motor. I uh, put it in a year ago and it's still running strong. Uh, you know, hats off to him. He did a good job for me and I appreciate it. And then you got two little hidden hidden gems in yeah, there. Yeah, I got it's a naturally aspirated motor because you don't see any turbos here. Yeah. Well, I don't know what this intercooler's for, but <laughs> I have twin 78-75s on the Okay. On it. I just put those on, so we haven't tested those yet. So really looking forward to seeing how it performs with those turbos. It's quite a bit bigger than what we had before. I had 66s on it before, so it's quite a bit bigger, but it's spooled really nice. Sounds good, so awesome. I think we're gonna be awesome. This is gonna be good to go. Super exciting. So uh, what's the horsepower this thing is, is putting out? The last track outing we went to at the Mod Nats, it ran a 497 at 143, and at the weight, the mass says like 1300. It made 1222 on the dyno, spinning the back tires. And what do you think it's gonna be with the, the new turbos on we're, there? We're hoping 14 to 1500 range. That's crazy, man. Pick up 100, 200 horsepower is like our goal, so. That's awesome, dude. And obviously this is a big motor. You're not just putting a Coyote motor in a Maverick. What did you exactly have to do to get this thing in here? Yeah, it was a nightmare. I had to actually cut the shock towers three inches out of each side. It has a tubular K member from AJE, and it's got box body struts, SN95 spindles, and it's basically like almost turns it into like a Fox body Mustang style front suspension. What kind of transmission are you using in this, in this beast of a motor you got? It's actually a aftermarket case turbo 400, okay. which is based off of a Chevrolet. Okay. Unfortunately, we yeah. <laughs> go that route. Got a Cameron converter in it. It's been in it since day one, seems to be working great. Um, and they actually are the ones that went through the transmission along with uh, my buddy, Jerry. He helped me uh, fix the input shaft, replace it. All right, so I know a lot of people are gonna be asking about this. Tell me about the hood. I wanted to run a grabber hood, mm -hmm. grabber style car. Basically, I made the car look like a grabber, even though it's not, but the engine so tall, ended up being so tall, I had to come up with an idea of how to fit it under a grabber hood. So between me, my dad, and my best friend Dana, we molded the cow to the hood, got it to fit really nice and look like it belongs. Most of it was a garage built. Yeah. A few things I took it out, the cage was done at Daryl Walter's yeah. place and some of the, the rear end and all, but most of the car was done in, in my two car garage. Crazy, man. Um, okay, so let's let's talk about the wheels a little bit. What do you what do you got here on the fronts and, and the backs? I got some ET gassers on the front here, kind of trying to keep the nostalgic look on it. Yeah. Got some uh, old pro stock slots from the 70s. Mm -hmm. Had them bead locked, 
by Mac Fab. Just looks different than in every other car. Yeah, track. looks good. What about the tires you're running on on the fronts and the back? Um, it's got the Mickey Thompson Sportsman's on the front, and I got the ET Pros on the back, 275 60s, which is what most radio cars run yeah. at radio prep tracks. They seem to work really good. Yeah, because not, I mean, not only are you, you cruise this on the street, but you race it as well. So. Absolutely. I actually have another set of slot wheels with nittos on the back that I cruise around the street with. Yeah. I have strange brakes all the way around. I actually have a lot of strange products. I have strange axles and spool and front struts right now. And then what about the, the exhaust here? So what I did was I ran the exhaust off the turbos over the front wheel and out the side of the fender here. And and the wastegate's also there, so I just ran it out there. Just kind of keep it simple, but the fender exit exhaust looks pretty badass. So. Yeah, it does, it looks sick. Yeah, we run a lot of small tire, stock suspension classes, street classes, anything that kind of like, more like along the street car type of stuff. You okay. know, and um, so yeah, so it still has the leaf springs under it. It's got aftermarket Calvert springs with Caltrack bars. I moved the leaf springs inward so we get the tire up under it a little bit. Had to um, beat on the inner fender wells a little bit to get the tire to fit good and push the quarters out a little bit. Got venture shocks on the back. Still kind of trying to get it all dialed in. We got one one sixty one one nine sixty foot at uh, my Nats. Hopefully we can do a little bit better than that and, and get it down the track a little bit faster. Heck yeah, yeah, I love the stance on this thing. It looks super, super good. So Thank you. yeah, it's awesome. It's got an 8.8 .8 rear um, Explorer. Okay. We narrowed it, put nine inch ends on it, um, braced it up. So it makes the gear selection a lot easier running an 8.8 rear, the same, basically the same rear and that comes in Mustangs. And I know this vinyl top didn't originally come on this car. It what did. made you decide to go with the vinyl top? It did not come on this car. I had seen some other cars that had the vinyl top on it, some Camaros and Novas, and it really looked good with the drag set up and stuff, and kind of like still t took me back to that nostalgic look, so I wanted to do that. And I see you have Redemption on the license plate here. What's the story behind that? Redemption has a couple of meanings for me. Kind of the first meaning is me finishing the car was it was a big redemption for me. It was like, cause it was a battle. And um, second meaning is, uh, Redemption means that we are saved by grace. Thank the Lord that we are and uh, that I was able to finish the car. All right, so let's talk about the interior a little bit. I know you have somewhat of the original dash here and then the door panels and stuff, but those were not black. They were red, correct? Yes, the whole interior was all red when I got the car. Um, it does have a stock dash in it that was painted black. The door panels actually originally were red. I dyed those black. It has a new dash pad and I put the black carpet in I wanted to black the interior out, of course. And I actually had the seats reupholstered with the old look from like the 70s. More like a 70 Mach 1, 69 70 Mach 1 with the red stripe in it. Yeah, because you still have the back seats in here. I still had the back seat in it. And it's fully caged. So it has an 850 certified cage in it with the removal door bars. When I'm cruising around the streets, I don't have the door bars in it. But when I go to the track, I put the door bars in. And then what about the, the steering wheel here and the gauges? What do you what do you um, It has a Grant classic looking steering wheel. Kind of wanted to make it keep it classic looking there again. It has a fast dash that goes along with the fast XFI ECU. It also has a parachute lever there, Hearst shifter. Still uses the key to, to fire the car up. That's the original awesome. ignition. Yeah, that's awesome. Blinkers work. Um, headlights, taillights, everything works like as it should as far as the street car goes. Windshield wipers even work. Yeah, that's great. Because a lot of cars, they delete those. So Absolutely. That's, that's cool. One that of the you first things that it. they do, I was like, I still have my windshield wipers on. And the center console was actually out of like a 1971 Mustang. Okay. Mavericks didn't come with consoles. I kind of needed one, uh, something. Yeah. That Mavericks didn't even, 1970 Maverick didn't even come with a glove box. So I kind of oh, need something okay. to carry my. Uh, I didn't, even, papers in. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I didn't know you put that, that, uh, I mean, I guess so because it had a bench seat in it yeah. when you got it. Had a bench seat. Yeah. The grabbers, even when they had bucket seats, they didn't really have consoles or glove boxes in 1970. That's crazy, man. Yeah. It looks, it honestly looks original. Like I really did. Yeah. I wanted to keep that, that, that clean look on yeah, it. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Well, let's, let's get this thing on the road, man. I'm, I'm excited to, to ride in this thing. Let's go. Let's do it.
feels good. Going uphill too, I'm like, holy crap. When you're getting on the gas, like when you're doing the pools, like how how much are you giving it, would you say? All of it. All of it. Yeah. It's, it's low boost right now, you know, it's not, honestly, what you're feeling is very little compared to what it really will make. Because yeah. I'm only on wastegate spring, and it's only got a, like a, a six pound spring in it, so it's only going to make maybe seven or eight pounds of boost. Okay. At the track, I'm making like 25 to 30 pounds of boost. Sheesh. Yeah, that's a big difference. From yeah, what you're feeling is only probably seven to 800 horsepower. And at the track, it's, you know, around 1,300 or so. Yeah, that's crazy. And I'm like getting sent back in my chair. I'm sure when you take off the line, you're freaking reeling. Really yeah, it's, it's pretty intense. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, I have that video clip of you, the GoPro clip of you getting thrown back, which I feel like is what I'm doing, but no, you're getting thrown back with some power. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of power. It's, it's pretty crazy to, to feel at the track how fast it's going, how fast things happen. Especially in this little car too, like, you would not, I mean, obviously looking at this car, you know there's something special about it, but you wouldn't think of a little Maverick would be freaking putting all that power in, you know? It's, it's very underestimated. Most people don't even think, think much about it until they see it run. Ooh, that thing is freaking bad, son. <laughs> Dang, dude, that thing is crazy. Look at that lady. That lady was like, was she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this car definitely breaks some necks, huh? Yeah, it does. <laughs> wraps up this video guys thank you so much for watching if you want to see more content like this and see more hot rods please subscribe like this video and i'll see you next time peace